The 2023 draft is in the books, and we are back with another video discussing the events that went down on the night of June 22nd. In the first one, we went over some of the biggest winners and losers of the night, discussing some guys who went later, but mostly bigger prospects that went in the lottery. And in today's video, we're going to be doing something a little different, talking about guys that went later that could make a huge impact. In today's video, we'll be going over some of the biggest steals, in my opinion, of the 2023 NBA Draft. And without further ado, let's get into things. First up on my list is an obvious one that will be on every list you see of steals from this class, and that is Cam Whitmore who was picked 20th by the Houston Rockets. Whitmore was projected to go as high as top 5 and seemed like a lock going into the night to go at least in the top 7 or 8 picks. The 18 year old wing from Villanova slid drastically all the way to pick 20 due to poor interviews and medical concerns, but I just feel like with a player like him who isn't even 19 yet, his talent and ceiling are undeniable. An extremely young, strong, and explosive wing with solid size at 6'6 with a 6'8 wingspan, he has shown a clear ability to get to the bucket and some real flashes of sticking with guys one on one on the defensive end as well as the ability to be a cutter off the ball, and even though the shot needs some work, he did show the ability to knock down some threes at Villanova, and seems like he will be at least a respectable three-point shooter at the next level, as at Villanova he shot 34% on around four attempts per game. Many have compared him to Miles Bridges, and the Villanova product's high upside is very easy to see. I think if he can be healthy, which obviously is a huge question, he will be a big steal for the Rockets at number 20 as I got him and Ahmed Thompson and as I said in my previous video, I really think they're a major winner of this draft. The next guy is Nick Smith Jr. A 6 foot 5, 19 year old 2 guard from Arkansas went 27th to the Charlotte Hornets. Many people thought Smith could be a top 10 pick earlier in the draft cycle, but as he battled with injuries throughout his freshman year at Arkansas, his numbers weren't great, averaging just under 13 a game on 37, 34, 74 splits. But watching his game, you can really see that the man who is the number 3 ranked player in last year's high school class has a clear knack for creating his own shot. Many NBA evaluators believe he's a better shooter than suggested by his stats in 17 games as he shot 50% on open threes for the Razorbacks in those 17 games and overall Smith Jr. has the ability to heat up very quickly, is a very capable defender with his length and quickness and I definitely believe even though his stats weren't great for the Razorbacks this is definitely a worthy gamble from Charlotte at pick 27 and he's someone who I think has some real upside and could be a piece for them alongside LaMelo Ball, Brandon Miller, Miller and the rest of that core. The third player on this list is another very high ranked high school prospect who struggled in their freshman year and that is Gigi Jackson who was picked 45th by the Memphis Grizzlies. Jackson was a 5 star recruit who was ranked 6th in his class and chose an interesting path committing to a not so great South Carolina squad. The 18 year old forward really struggled in his lone year with the Gamecocks, putting up 15 and 6 on just 38, 32, 68 splits, but he truly does have one of the highest ceilings out of any player in this class. Jackson is a very athletic 6 foot 9 forward with a 7 foot wingspan who can handle the ball and similarly to Smith didn't shoot too well in college but clearly has shown the ability to create his own shot and get to his spots that very few guys in this class can match. He also has a build that is ideal to guarding multiple positions at the next level with his combination of agility, size, and he also rebounded the ball pretty well at South Carolina. He's shown real shot creation flashes from mid-range and also from deep, and many people think he could be a solid shooter at the next level, and I think overall, at 45th, you know, he's very raw, and people did see some immaturity in his behavior off the court and on the court with his mistakes and also how he called out his coaches after a game and he likely won't play much in his first year on a Grizzly squad that is looking to win games but after some time down with the Memphis hustle and a few years in the league this guy who is the youngest prospect in the entire draft class has a chance to be really really good. 
one of the highest ceilings in the draft easily in my opinion and of course there's a chance he just never figures it out but a team like the Grizzlies who have shown in the past few years their ability to really develop young guys getting a talent like this at 45 is good value and a very worthy home run swing. Fourth is someone who is really the exact opposite of the last two guys and is an older, much more proven player who slid all the way to 57 where the Warriors picked him up and that is Trace Jackson Davis, the 23 year old big man from Indiana. Jackson Davis is someone who going into the night a few thought he could even go late first or early second but he slid all the way down the draft due to him being a 23 year old 6'9 big man. But nonetheless, I think the Warriors got a guy who could be a very solid backup big. Even though, as said before, he is just 6'9", he makes up for some of that with his 7 foot wingspan and great leaping ability as well. He is one of, if not the best shot blocker in college basketball and showed some real ability as a playmaker as well for the Hoosiers. This past season, he averaged 20, 10, 4, and 3 blocks at Indiana and was a huge part of them going 23 and 12 and being a 4 seed in the NCAA tournament. He is a great rim runner as well and had over 70 dunks this past season. He is a serious lob threat and I get he fell due to his age and size, but he's a big that is mobile, athletic, can really pass and seems like he could fit nicely on Golden State with his ability to set screens fine guys and roll to the basket I think this was a really solid get for the Warriors and he could help them sooner rather than later playing around 15 to 20 minutes a night backing up Kavon Looney. The last player on this list is another guy who played in the Big Ten and that is Bryce Sensabaugh the 19 year old 6 foot 6 wing who was picked 28th by the Utah Jazz and is easily a top 3 scorer in this draft in my opinion. At Ohio State, Sensabaugh averaged 16 and 5 on 48, 40, 83 splits, almost taking 5 threes a game, and has clearly shown the ability to score in a multitude of different ways. With his solid frame, he can back down guys and has shown the ability to hit tons of contested shots over defenders as well as hit shots on the perimeter. He's not the most athletic or the best passer and defender, but as far as shot makers go in this draft class, there are very, very few players that are better than him at just putting the ball in the basket. He also can score as a guy who's off ball, as just a catch and shoot threat, and I think he'll be a really nice complimentary scorer to Utah, who again were one of my winners of the draft. I think getting him, Keontae George, and Taylor Hendricks was a great haul, and I think Bryce Sensabaugh, as said previously, will be a really nice complimentary scorer. Those are five of my biggest steals from this year's past draft. Honorable mentions to Colby Jones, Max Lewis, Leonard Miller, and Derek Whitehead. As always, I thank y'all for watching and peace out.